When it comes to outdoorsy activities, there is a wide range of choices. I mean, you could climb a mountain or you can take a nap in a hammock. Well, we have a couple of stories tonight, and while they're not that extreme, they are pretty far apart. One is about something that's very active, takes a lot of practice and dedication, and an investment of time and money. But our first story tonight, by Patrick Murphy, well, it's about a new outdoor attraction that is both free and easy. With blue skies and a gentle breeze, it was a perfect spring day to dedicate a garden. This is a very special day in the history of St. Louis, and I'm... Departing from tradition, the there was no ribbon cutting. Instead, the mayor placed a call to the park's maintenance center. Yes, uh, this is Francis Soleil calling, and I'm calling to tell you, gentlemen, it's time to start the fountains. And to paraphrase Ronald Reagan, tear down the fences. <laughs> Thank you. It's called City Garden, and it's St. Louis's newest park, located in the heart of downtown on what for years had been two deserted blocks of the Gateway Mall between Chestnut and Market and 8th and 10th Streets. Three acres of gardens, fountains, walkways, and art, City Garden is open 365 days a year. There's no charge for admission, and it's okay if you want to bring your dog, walk on the grass, or play in the fountains. It's a public park. In fact, more public than most city parks in America. Downtown sculpture parks are very rare, and there are no completely open and accessible sculpture parks right in the heart of any other American downtown. We have something here that's really unique in the United States. The city of St. Louis owns the land. The nonprofit Gateway Foundation came up with the idea, contributed $30 million for its construction, and will pay for most of the park's operating expenses. Gateway also purchased 24 sculptures by internationally acclaimed artists, which are on permanent loan to the garden. Because City Garden is a public space, the sculptures represent a range of work designed to appeal to a wide variety of tastes. They're all modern and contemporary pieces, but within that framework, there are some pieces that are figurative, you know, you know what you're looking at, and there are others that are very abstract. Um, in addition, there are some pieces that are very serious and somber, and there are others that are playful and whimsical and that uh, a child would enjoy. But even though sculpture is an important element of City Garden, it's not just a sculpture park. It's really something broader than that, something bigger than that. It's also a botanical garden. It's also an urban park. It's an oasis. But not just any oasis. It would have to be a place created specifically for St. Louis. That was the challenge and the fun for the garden's designers. You know, for every landscape architect, frankly, to design a sculpture garden is, is a dream project. As designers, our influences were, okay, we're in St. Louis, which means you're on the, on the Mississippi River, uh, and really basically the place where the Missouri and the Mississippi meet. So we really got influenced right from the start by these great river systems, wonderful geology that's expressed as the rivers cut through these limestone outcrops. And we said, can we bring an abstraction of that, some kind of transformation of those local or regional qualities to this place. Because the last thing we wanted to do was to make a generic place. We wanted this to be feel really a, of its place, special to St. Louis and its locale. And that's what they did. A wall built of Missouri limestone arcing along the north edge of the garden refers to the region's river bluffs. This bluff has a 10-foot video screen that on opening day showed the stages of the garden's construction. At another point in the wall, a waterfall offers a touch of nature and makes its own soft sounds that compete with the noise of the city. The land from the wall slopes down to a flatter middle band of the garden, representing the floodplains. It's a place where there are equal spaces of sun and shade, with broader, more open spaces to show some of the garden's larger sculptures. Shade is provided by a wide variety of trees native to Missouri and plants have been chosen to provide a new show for each of St. Louis's distinct seasons. The south edge of the park is more like a river terrace, with spaces for shrubs, flowers, and ground cover. A low granite wall winds along its borders, providing nooks for smaller sculptures, and reminding us that we live in a region shaped by winding rivers. 
With a nod to history, some of the pathways and plantings follow some of the property lines and foundations of the block's original buildings, as found in an old map from 1916. On the west end of the park, a mound rises behind the Civil Courts building, linking park visitors to the history of the ancient mound builders and St. Louis's former nickname, Mound City. Something we try to do in our projects is combine or strike the right balance between natural and, hist and, and cultural historical references. You know, so it's not all about nature, or it's, and it's not all about culture or humans. It's somehow that meeting ground between the two, because I think that's what a great park or garden ought to be about. The real test of City Garden, anchored as it is in our region's past, is how future generations of St. Louisans will relate to it. We want this thing to, <laughs> to be here in 500 years from now and, and be still experienced you know, by people in the same positive way, but probably changed ways. <laughs>